everyone and welcome to Indian Networks webinar. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. We're so happy that you were able to join us. Today, our senior product manager for our flagship product, PP450, will be going over several best services for service providers and enterprises. And as always, I encourage you to write down your questions in the questions window, and we will allocate 10-15 minutes at the end when Matt will be answering all your questions real time. At the end of this webinar, you will be getting our champion signature thank you note with the recording of this webinar. With this, I would like to give the microphone to Matt. Hello, uh, my name is Matt Mangriotis. I'm a product manager with Cambium Networks, and uh, we're going to talk about internet broadband services for service providers and enterprises. Um, let me skip to the next slide. So there's a lot of different applications that uh, are used when you're a service provider and you need to uh, do all these various applications to get uh, data in and out of the, the network. Uh, this webinar is going to focus mainly on the bolded uh, item there, the enterprise access and video surveillance for which point to multipoint solutions are, are well suited. Uh, typically, a you know, macro cell backhaul, a small cell backhaul are point-to-point uh, -point applications, um, as are typically the uh, cell site on wheels or VSAT replacements. Um, but smack in the middle of the network is the enterprise access layer or video surveillance applications, where a point-to-multipoint solution is probably uh, a better suited and uh, more cost-effective uh, method to do that. Um, Cambium Networks provides uh, solutions that are field proven and especially the PMP450 platform. We'll talk about several case studies where this uh, product line makes a heck of a lot of sense. What, who are Cambium Networks? Uh, we provide affordable, high quality uh, solutions, products uh, to provide always on media rich services. There's 4.6 billion people in the world that don't have connectivity today. Um, there's exponential growth of data in the Internet of Things lately. Show a couple graphs that uh, prove that. And Cambium can provide differentiated performance, resilience, security uh, for all those things that need to be connected. Demand for broadband is increasing. Uh, global broadband penetration continues to increase at a growth rate of 5%, uh, at least through 2018, and probably increasing thereafter. People are spending more of their money on broadband communication. It's becoming a, a right, not a privilege, uh, to have broadband connectivity. And service providers are the ones that are going to support this growth. But they need to do it while maintaining profitable revenues. In the past, um, the connectivity of places, or connecting places to each other, uh, was the main goal. And that's been the case through history uh, more recently. We've started connecting people together uh, through social media and other functions. And that's estimated to become uh, up to about 5 billion uh, people in the world connected to each other. But what's really taken off now is the connect connectivity of things. And uh, the expectation is that by 2025 or so, uh, there'll be 50 billion things on this world connected to each other. Machine-to-machine uh, -machine connectivity is really going to drive this exponential traffic. Um, internet traffic and data backhaul needs. So what are the key vertical markets uh, that Cambio Networks provides uh, product to support? Uh, service providers, um, wireline, both wireline and wireless service providers are our key market segment for, for Cambio Networks. Um, obviously, wireless internet service providers or WISPs in both mature and emerging markets are, are key players as well. Uh, but we also support many other vertical markets, industrial communications, um, enterprise connectivity through education, healthcare, municipals, uh, administrative buildings, campuses, um, as well as state and local government, public safety, um, and uh, lease line replacements. Uh, we also provide federal defense products uh, that are suited for that for rapid deployment, uh, disaster relief, 
national safety, border protection, those kinds of applications as well. So as you can see, Cambium Network's portfolio covers lots and lots of different uh, vertical applications. Um, but as I said, today we're focused on the uh, service provider and what we can do for you guys. So many service providers around the world already have employed Cambium Network's equipment to uh, provide many of the applications we talked about. Uh, it's proven performance. We perform in near non-line of sight as well as line of sight. Uh, it's a high rel high re highly reliable connection, uh, unparalleled, unlicensed expertise. We've been doing this for, for quite some time, 12 plus years, um, where we focus, our focus has been on the unlicensed spectrum. Uh, it's easy to deploy. It can be deployed in a matter of hours. wireless link uh, that can happen in hours, or minutes, not uh, days. It's tolerant to interference, and it's a, it's a secure link. So wireless service providers, again, um, provide 2G, 3G, 4G, LTE, uh, macro cell, and small cell. Um, we can add overlay, add or overlay wireless backbone capacity to that network. Uh, provide disaster, disaster pre preparation uh, with resilient links around the network. Um, we can extend the network quickly while licenses are being applied for. Um, supplying last mile access is the key differentiator there or extending services into underserved and remote areas. Um, eliminate leased lines. Uh, last mile access and enterprise access are key applications as well that we'll focus on today. For wireline guys, um, we can rapidly extend that DSLAM network. Um, oftentimes the uh, the DSLAM just won't go that far and you, you're leaving customers at the edge of your network that, that are unserved or underserved where wireless can get you that last mile. The last mile access and, and high revenue enterprise customers are waiting out there um, but you're unable to service them with uh, either twisted pair wiring or it's too expensive to put fiber. And so this, the, the wireless, fixed wireless solutions are, are the way to get that last mile or those extra enterprise customers. So this is a kind of a schematic diagram of uh, how, how the product will be deployed in this kind of scenario for enterprise access deployment. Uh, you can see in the center building there, we have a pop uh, the red line indicates the fiber um, to your main network or to the back backbone. Uh, you can use point-to-point -to, -point to do a high-capacity backhaul to a single site uh, or a macro cell. Um, but you can also use the point-to-multipoint product to go from building to building, uh, building to street, or down at street level as well. And this point-to-multipoint product can service uh, many endpoints um, or just a few. And it can do near non-line of sight. You can see the, the shot at, at the upper end of the uh, diagram using multi-path reflection to achieve a link uh, from one building that's not necessarily line of sight to the other. In terms of enter enterprise access, uh, the requirements are typically uh, something on the order of 30 to 100 megs, uh, symmetrical bandwidth for providing symmetrical bandwidth, um, making sure that that link is secure. Uh, scalability with TDD synchronization is, is often necessary. Uh, you want to make sure that the form factor is rugged and uh, able to be placed on buildings or be somewhat compact in size. Per usually it's IP services that are required and you want to make sure that there's ease of management. And the PMP450 platform and the, the 450i, which I'll talk a little bit about what that is uh, in an upcoming slide here, um, meets all of those requirements and then some. And just for an example of a, a business case that would help um, kind of solidify this for, for from the business side, if you needed to offer a 20 megabit symmetrical uh, data link with low latency, um, it's assumed here that, that we could make $200 a month uh, for that service. Uh, it would be a $200 installation on a two-year contract. We could do that with uh, 
guaranteeing a specific a specific SLA uh, with 20 megs. It has security and management, and the revenue in total would be about five thousand dollars. The cost to exp- to put this equipment out, assuming you can utilize about five SMs per access point, is about four four thousand dollars, or eight hundred dollars per user, and then maybe a thousand dollars for support and bandwidth. Now these are this is just an example, and these are uh, assumptions on my part. If you have any feedback or want to want to discuss uh, a different model, feel free to do that in the question section at the end. Uh, but what this shows is that in six to eight months, uh, you're, you are achieving ROI with a 60% margin over that two-year period. And really, in about three months, your ROI is, is re- you're returned on your investment on the equipment cost. Um, so it's a very quick payback uh, for this sort of uh, enterprise access deployment. The other main application that we're um, well suited for in the point to multi point side is uh, video surveillance. We can deploy in a complete wireless solution that can be mission critical, providing last mile and backhaul uh, for the video services. It can be deployed in line of sight, near line of sight, or non line of sight. It's outstanding performance. Uh, we have all the security uh, that, that you could need in the platform, um, and it it, ha- it really has the industry-leading radio performance, uh, well-suited for video surveillance applications. These small footprints, uh, small product footprints, will pass the uh, municipal requirements for aesthetics. Uh, there's not very large uh, parabolic dishes or uh, large and cumbersome deployments. These things are, are fairly small. The PMP450 platform is, uh, is a nice compact design well-suited for, for meeting aesthetic ordinances. You can see some of the deployments here. Uh, many of our different products are used in, in many different applications and in, in, uh, in video surveillance across many different uh, types of, of verticals. So why 450? Well, there's, there's several advantages and, and key attributes to the product portfolio platform that lend itself to uh, being well suited for this. First of all, the channel access is uh, it's deterministic and it's scalable. So the way our TVD system works is that the uh, subscribers will request data only when needed and that'll be mapped into the next frame by the access point. The access point controls the entire frame and only de- delivers bandwidth to those subscribers that need it when they need it. Um, without this, with CSMA or some other the polling functions that the uh, standardized chipsets use, as you add subscribers, your, your latency goes up and your channel access becomes congested. Um, that's not the case with uh, BMP450, which leads to the latency um, point. Uh, the next point is that that latency is consistent and deterministic. With when you add subscribers to the PMP450 system, the latency does not change um, very much at all. It's very consistent, uh, even under very heavy load. And that combined with the next one, the GPS sim- synchronization, um, GPS synchronization really re- results in efficient channel reuse uh, and easy deployment. It, by having things synchronized to the GPS pulse, you can minimize your stuff interference, and you can also then reuse frequencies um, throughout your entire network in order to maximize the spectral efficiency of the network. Um, all of these things lead to the maximum throughput and system capacity, um, as well as spectral efficiency, to get to higher aggregate real user throughput with a given channel size and available spectrum. So all of these things uh, are the key advantages to the PMP450 platform. You may have used Link Planner in the past uh, for PTP links. Um, it, it provides the entire path portfolio uh, profile. You can put in all the configuration details, and it will result in a summary of the performance of that link. Uh, we find this Link Planner tool to be very accurate. And now uh, we can 
plot links in, of PMP products in Link Planner. That's fairly new, um, and it's it's a pretty neat yeah, addition to the tool. So Link Planner is provided free uh, by Cambium Networks on the website, and you can actually go in there and plan out multi-point links uh, in Link Planner and have them have them all um, shown with the performance levels that are expected. The PMP450 platform is a software-defined platform that we continue to develop and evolve <laughs> as the uh, product matures. It's about two years old now, and in that period of time, we've uh, added frequency bands, uh, new hardware that covers different frequencies. It's a spectral, spectrum agile architecture, which means we can easily adapt new frequencies uh, to the same using the same basic uh, FPGA RF interface and same management software and everything, uh, but we can add new frequencies to the portfolio, and we have. We've added 2.4 uh, and 3 gig in addition to the, the uh, initial product, which was in the 5 gig spectrum. We've enhanced throughput and link stability by adding new modulation modes. We can do 256 QEM. Uh, we also do MIMO A, which is a single payload diversity. Uh, mode, and that's all controlled dynamically to provide better link stability where RF conditions aren't super favorable. Uh, we've improved packets per second on the subscriber side especially to allow for high capacity enterprise links, uh, more data to fewer subscribers if, if that's needed. Um, we've enhanced the MTU size. We can, uh, we can support 1,718-byte packets, uh, which allows for a full data payload of 1,500 bytes, plus as many MPLS tags as are necessary to support your network. Um, we also have the feature-rich QLS. While there's only two queues of, of priority, there's a lot of configuration that can go on, and, and it's fully customizable um, QLS system in, in the radio itself. You don't need any additional uh, routing equipment behind it. So I'll spend a minute on the roadmap and talk about what's what's upcoming for this product platform. Um, 13.3 was released in January. That's our most recent one. And I'll talk in a little bit more detail about those features in just a minute. Um, in April, 13.4 is coming, which adds uh, frame utilization, which is a statistic that will enable you to monitor um, when the link capacity is running low and when you'll need to add more capacity to your network. It'll be a very useful tool for uh, monitoring your network. We're also going to beef up uh, some of the security features, uh, add some uh, radius VSA for the zero touch, which I'll cover in just a minute. Um, and then mid-year, uh, we're expecting to release a couple of new pieces of hardware, uh, namely the 450i. 450i is a wideband radio. Uh, it'll cover 4.9 to 5.9, and I'll cover a little bit more of that in a, in a further slide, um, as well as the 450D, which is a high-gain integrated parabolic dish uh, for the 450SM. That's coming mid-year in 14.0. 14.1 will follow on uh, in the September timeframe, Q3, and that'll include interoperability with the current 450 product for 450i will will interoperate with 450 um, and will support the next gen uh, management tools and and finish up all the certifications that are required for that wideband radio and then later in the year towards the end of the year we'll uh, launch a 900 megahertz version mainly focused on the uh, U.S. market where that, oh, that frequency is available but it, it's again another I tool in the toolbox um, for the 450 platform. Uh, we'll also in, add uh, 40 megahertz channel support um, for 450i, as well as um, QoS enhancements where we'll add some more um, levels of, of uh, priority. So in November, I do want to mention that uh, in this past November, 13.2.1 was released, and there was numerous uh, performance improvements in that software load, uh, which we enabled some packet processing power on the uh, subscriber side, added those MIMO A modulations, um, as well as increased the, uh, 
algorithm improve the algorithm for rate adapt, uh, which leads to more stable and more uh, throughput. So rate adapt changes won't affect throughput as much um, because it's smarter about the way it does the rate adapt. We added VLAN uh, configurations uh, that you can set the priority bit. You can actually configure the priority bit per VLAN um, to make sure that if your uh, VLANs are need to be in high priority channel, they can be uh, based on what comes in and what the product reads. We can also read read the VLAN tag and actually change it as it comes into the system if, if that's necessary. Not a lot of products out there that can do that. Uh, forced burr is a method of uh, keeping the received signal level uh, accurate. Um, you don't no longer need to have traffic path traversing the link in order to maintain an accurate uh, received signal level. We can filter on IPv6 traffic and prioritize on it. Uh, it's no longer just a transparent uh, passing of that kind of traffic. And we've added GLONASS support. Uh, that's the Russian satellite system. Um, and all that means is that we will now be able to track uh, and lock onto more satellites and most likely quicker uh, because we see both systems uh, using the chip that's on board. 13.3 was uh, released in January. Um, and this added a few features, a couple of them very specific for the 3 gigahertz uh, band in order to enable migration from the WiMAX uh, family of uh, products that are out there. Uh, 802.16d and 802.16e based products operate in uh, five millisecond frames. Uh, all the WiMAX products do. And now we have the ability for the PMP450 to operate in that frame size in order to synchronize with those, those products. It has the side effect of improving throughput at the expense of uh, increasing latency slightly. Uh, by by about two times. So you get to about 10 milliseconds of latency. Um, but you can, in the smaller channel sizes, you, you'll see a bump in throughput for, by going to five millisecond frames. Um, for three gigahertz, we also added seven megahertz channel bandwidths uh, because many of the three gigahertz licenses that were granted are in the seven megahertz chunks or 14 megahertz chunks. And that is uh, directly to make sure that the customers that have those licenses can utilize their the spectrum that they were allocated. Another really cool feature of 13.3 is the zero touch configuration and the import export of a configuration file. Um, that configuration file can be saved from either an access point or a subscriber module, um, downloaded from the radio and then uploaded to any other radio or saved uh, offline to, to be replaced whenever needed. Now, the other cool thing that that allows us to do is use option DHCP option 66 uh, in order to pull down a configuration file from a central server. So how this works is that you can take a subscriber module out of the box, have the installer align it, and once it registers to an access point, uh, it'll go to the DHCP server, pull down the configuration file, load it into the SM itself, uh, reboot and everything's configured properly. The installer needs to do nothing to completely configure the radio. It's a it's a great addition to the portfolio and for service providers who deploy lots and lots of subscribers, this will really save time and allow um, fewer mistakes on install. We also beefed up the security management protocols. Uh, we now support HTTPS, SNMP v3, and the ability to disable FTP in Telnet. 13.4 uh, will be available in a beta form um, probably next week. Uh, stay tuned for the announcement there, but uh, we should have a, a beta version available very, very shortly. And we would love for you guys to join the beta program um, and feedback on the uh, forum. Again, available in Q2, uh, we'll have the next generation of PMP450 called the PMP450i. That is a wideband radio. It'll operate from 4900 to 5925 gigahertz. Um, it's ruggedized. It's completely sealed, IP6667. 
Visually, it looks a lot like the PTP 650 if you're familiar with that product line. Uh, it's all metal construction, um, but it's the body of the radio is actually about two thirds the size, so it's a bit smaller than the PTP 650. Um, it'll be available in a connectorized version, which is the, the lower pictures in the in the slide here. Um, but it'll also be available in a high gain integrated SM. In a 12 by 12, 12 inch by 12 inch uh, flat panel uh, antenna, it will provide 23 dB of gain. A very nice, easy to install package uh, for you to, to deploy. It's a new power scheme. It uses 802.3AT PoE, uh, which is a little bit different than in the past for our Canon you know, 29 and a half volt. Um, non-standard uh, power supplies. This one brings the, the standard into it. And really the, the real attractive thing about this next generation hardware is that we're using the next generation FPGA, uh, which is a system on a chip that contains two uh, ARM processors that'll enable us to do some really cool things, including um, bumping up that packet per second capability in the radio. Um, as well as implementing 40 megahertz channels. The PMP450D, which I mentioned before, is also coming around mid-year. This is basically a mechanical repackaging of the current subscriber module. Uh, but what this does is give you a really nice, easy to assemble, high gain um, alternative to the basic subscriber module. So this basically eliminates the need for that offset reflector dish that's been around in the portfolio for many, many years, um, replacing it with this. Uh, it's very easy to install, very easy to assemble. The only assembly with a tool that's required is the, the four screws that hold that um, back of the dish, the main part of the dish, onto the radio. Everything else snaps together. Um, you can do it with one hand. Very cool assembly. Um, it'll be very easy to assemble and deploy and uh, allow you to achieve those first install rates uh, that you need uh, where a shot might be difficult or the uh, offset reflector dish is just too cumbersome or not allowed to be done. So this is also coming in, in mid-year mid time frame. So in summary, uh, Cambium 450 platform is the industry-leading point-to-multipoint solution for critical networks. Uh, we've got proven field reliability. It's built upon the quality legacy of, of the Cambium products, which have been around for more than 10 years. Uh, we've calculated a mean time before failure of greater than 40 years, and that's based on field returns over the first two years of life care, uh, as well as reliability testing that we've done. So we, we're very confident that we have a greater than 40 year mean time before failure. Um, the 450 provides extreme scalability. Access points can support 200 plus subscribers at each. And many access points can be deployed at, at, at every site or throughout your network uh, to maximize throughput requirements uh, as well as uh, scale your network. As, as big as you need it to be. Uh, it employs OFDM, MIMO technology. It's 2x2 two two MIMO right now, uh, which provides high bandwidth for line of sight, as well as uh, other modulation modes like single payload uh, diversity to provide link enhancement for near non-line of sight operation. Um, GPS synchronization allows us to achieve maximal spe spectral efficiency uh, while maintaining very low latency to support any applications that you might need, including voice or video. And as you can see, there's a robust roadmap for uh, future platform enhancements. Uh, we're going to be serving the customer base with this product platform for quite some time. At this point, I just wanted to share with you a couple of case studies um, of customers that are using this product in enterprise access and video um, deployments. And the first one here is in Kenya. Uh, the company is called Access Kenya. They sell, they had, uh, they started out as residential uh, deployments, um, but they, they've 
gone and really uh, focused on enterprise. They have over a thousand corporate clients right now, and they started out with PMP 100 product, but quickly moved over to PMP 450 due to the capacity increases that they've realized. And so they're operating in they, a they five well. gigahertz unlicensed spectrum. They, they, they. And in Kenya, it's it's quite polluted. It's quite uh, the noise floor is quite high, and they've determined that uh, the PMP 450 platform is ideally suited to operate in this kind of environment and provides the, their customers with the service that they need. And the prices uh, are favorable compared to other other things that they uh, they've investigated. A slightly different application is uh, down in Puerto Rico. In San Juan, um, <laughs> there was a temporary <laughs> I mean, I mean, uh, event at a studio. Huh? I'm sorry, at a stadium. Huh? And um, we were able to provide uh, temporary connectivity to that stadium on a, on a very short notice. Uh, it was rapidly deployed, installed in hours, and performed with zero downtime. Um, so that's another application that can be installed in a, in a very fast so manner. Um, the city of Palm Beach, Florida, we have many cities in the U.S. Uh, that are using the equipment, uh, the PMV 450, for video surveillance and public safety in the public safety sector. And really, this allows us to, to do many things, uh, including traffic uh, management, uh, license plate recognition, uh, critical infrastructure to municipal buildings, lots of different uh, abilities, uh, applications are, are able to be worked with um, the point-to-multipoint system. They also use the point-to-point -point system in the backhaul uh, on the same network. So with that, I'd like to turn it back over to Emily uh, to talk a little bit about um, our social media. Thank you, Matt. Um, so just to let you know that uh, Cambian Networks is very active on social media. We are on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Google Plus, and Weibo. It's a Chinese network. So we use Facebook primarily for posting pictures and the best stories. Our customers love to post there images and uh, network configuration for everyone to see. LinkedIn we use primarily for content and posting case studies and um, other publications. Twitter is mostly used for uh, quick tweets about upcoming releases, um, our success stories, etc. Google Plus is uh, upcoming and we think that we're going to use it mostly for uh, content again. And of course, Weibo is a Chinese, very popular network uh, where um, our um, PR agency in China is uh, looking into that and um, answering all questions. Uh, next big thing that happened for Cambium, we just launched Forum. And we consider it forum as a consolidation of our customers where they come in, they uh, share their success stories, they share their ideas, they ask each other how they uh, battle different problems, how um, they resolve different problems, and uh, we consider it as a great place for everyone to be in to understand uh, our customer base, to understand what Cambium is about, and to just uh, talk to everyone and hear everybody's success story. At this point, we're opening floor for uh, questions, and I think Matt is ready to answer them. I encourage everyone to type in your questions, and I uh, will try to answer all of them. Yeah, feel free to type them into the question box, um, and I'll be happy to answer them. So the first question that came in is, uh, for 5 gigahertz, can Cambium talk to 802.11 products? Uh, no. The answer is no. Uh, Cambium PMP450 is a proprietary uh, air interface and does not interface with uh, standards-based equipment. Uh, including 802.11n, 
or 80216. Uh, it's a, a software-defined radio that, that we've created from the ground up. It, it used to be known as a canopy um, when it was we were actually part of Motorola at one time. Uh, but it is it is a proprietary air interface that, that only operates and talks to Cambium equipment. It is not a standards-based uh, product. It's a proprietary implementation. There's a question about PTP 450. Um, why it can't sync with CMM3. So PTP 450 is based on the subscriber module of the PMP uh, 450, and that product does not have the circuitry to, to do the sync over power, which is what the CMM provides. Um, so it's simply not there. Uh, the other ways to provide sync to a PTP 450 are through the universal GPS module. Um, that's, that's probably the easiest uh, method to do that. Um, another question is, what is the maximum bandwidth an SM, an SM PMP 450 SM can provide? Um, the answer is with the release of 13.2.1, you can get the entire capacity of uh, the access point in, in, into a single SM, meaning we can show that uh, all 125 megabits of information can transverse uh, that, that single SM. It has to be on version 13.2.1 or later, though, to be able to do that. The next question is, will the new equipment to be released this year will use Will it be able to use the 5.1 gigahertz that has just been opened by the U.S., the Uni3 band? Uh, the answer is yes. We will certify that product in 49, 51, 52, 54, and 57. All the bands that are available in the U.S. will be certified uh, FCC with that new product line, the 450i. The 450, as it stands today, only operates in 54 and 57, uh, and that will continue to be the case. Are there any other questions I can answer? They all came at once, and then now we have a low. We'll wait one more minute, um, but if there's nothing else, uh, I would like to thank everyone for joining tonight. Um, and I hope this was informational. And any other questions that didn't get answered, you can see my email on the screen. Um, there's one more question and I'll answer is, will 450 be upgradable to 450i? And the answer is no. Uh, it's, it is different hardware. Uh, they will interoperate with each other, but they one cannot become the other one. Uh, it is different hardware. And with that, I think we'll close it. Uh, thank you very much again for joining and uh, look forward to uh, having another one of these in the near future. Take care. Thank you, everyone, again. And uh, I encourage you to come to Cambium Network website. Check out our upcoming Q2 webinars. We have a great program for you. And uh, please join us again. Thanks. Thanks.